Uh, Sergey Brin, Larry Page, and Bill Gates couldn't be here tonight, but they all got together and had sex, giving birth to a two-headed monster named Fran Brown and Rob Reagan. Together, they are the Lords of the Bing. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for making it to our talk. Uh, we're going to be talking to you today about search engine hacking. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming out. They saved the best for last, and also for the room that's not marked on any of the maps. I'm glad you guys all made it out. Um, uh, my name's Fran Brown. I'm a managing partner at Stack and Lou. With me is my associate, Rob Reagan. And uh, as was mentioned, we are the lords of the Bing. <laughs> so uh, basically what we're going to talk about today is the fact that Google hacking, which uh, those of you that are familiar with it know that it kind of started around 2003, 2004 time frame. <laughs> Uh, it has kind of ceased to be developed. It's, it's, no one is actively uh, pursuing it. While the search engines are coming out with all these great new features, uh, we notice that no one is really leveraging them uh, when it comes to identifying vulnerability information or identifying sensitive information leaks. And so we realized that all of our tool, all the tools that existed, just they didn't work anymore. They were getting blocked. They, uh, you know, they, there wasn't, they didn't have any new features, and we sought out to change that. And we also sought out to, you know, make, just have you think a little bit differently about how, uh, you know, the largest treasure troves on the internet, that is the popular search engines indexes, can be mined for information. And, of course, we're here to blow your minds. Hence the blow your mind icon at the bottom there. <laughs> And so we really decided that, uh, of course, Google is one of our favorites, and also Bing. Uh, Bing's kind of been underplayed. Uh, it, there, are, there was a couple tools that were developed, but they didn't really allow you to do um, any vulnerability uh, discovery, only minor footprinting. And we realized that uh, you know, these, have, these two have some of the best crawlers out there, some of the largest indexes. They both uh, had, had caches. For you, that would persist data even after it was taken down. And uh, they both had some really nice features. Um, for example, uh, Bing lets you search by IP address. That was something that uh, Google doesn't allow you to do. And uh, that, that's something I'll get into a little bit later on. Um, what we see here, how many of you guys are familiar with Google hacking to some extent? We're not going to dwell on the past. Good amount of people. Um, what we see up here for those who don't, just, or just a quick refresher, is the type of information that you can get out of Google or Bing. Um, this is the Google Hack database originally. Uh, we could see you get things like uh, by searching for error messages, SQL error messages, or in URL passwords.txt, or things of that nature. You could pull up some pretty interesting information. These are some old school examples. But what, now we're, we're going to show you what we came up with that's new. Uh, we're calling it Google Diggity and Bing Diggity. Uh, basically, uh, we're, we made some command line tools and now a graphical user interface that you can use that allows you to query up against the Google Ajax API, which does not get blocked. Uh, you, you may know that the, um, you may have used the SOAP API that they released uh, back in 2005. That, they stopped issuing keys a couple years after that was released and now it's gone completely. It was in December 2006. As of September of last September. year, all the old tools that have kind of hobbled along for a few years have finally all stopped working completely as of uh, last September. But utilizing the new Ajax API, which is kind of designed for people to just build widgets on their site to uh, leverage Google to search their site, uh, we were able to, to make, make this nice tool that doesn't really violate any terms of service either. Uh, so if, you're, if that's something you're concerned about, if you're an organization that wants to, to just monitor Google for information without getting blocked, you can leverage this interface. Uh, we, ha has anyone ever used the Google search, uh, custom search engine? It's a free app that Google provides to you that lets you just specify uh, domains that uh, you want to monitor. It, it basically filter Google results down to only what you care about. So it, their, their interface for that is just a, a web interface, but it also provides a key that you can use uh, as, a, as a query string parameter. So we allow you to set up Google custom search engines and uh, plug that into our, our interface so that you can get uh, down to just the domains you care about. And also we build Bing Diggity, which uses the Bing SOAP API, which is completely unrestricted. And uh, you can uh, mine Bing for information. Uh, some things like uh, enumerating URLs and getting IP to virtual host information with that IP address uh, feature I mentioned before, which we're going to demonstrate. 
And we also developed the first ever Bing hacking database. Uh, previous tools didn't uh, really do anything other than minor footprinting because no one had gone and done what Johnny Long did back in 2003 and 2004, and he made the Google hacking database. Well, we made the Bing hacking database. Because the feature sets are disparate between the two search engines, we had to do things like convert uh, it in URL to, uh, in anchor. to in anchor. And uh, we had to do things like take all in title and convert it to in, in title. And basically just did us some research on the feature set that Bing exposes and converted the known, known hacking techniques that work in Google to a format that Bing would understand. And finally, if, uh, um, if you are not afraid of uh, potentially violating the terms of service, Google Scrape Diggity uh, is another tool that we uh, are releasing. In that um, the Google Ajax API is nice, it's updated. Uh, uh, it, it's, um, one of its limitations though is that it limits you to 64 results per query. Uh, so if you have a relatively small company or that you're trying to profile, that might be okay. Uh, but it makes a footprinting a nightmare if you can only enumerate 64 pages for a particular search as well as uh, uh, it's less known that the actual search sets are different. So maybe in the Google Ajax API, if you search for in title an Etsy password, it might come up with 300 results, while uh, the, actually going through the Google web interface might give you 4,000 results or something like that. So the Google Ajax API is actually a shorter uh, result set than, than actual Google. So um, one of the things we did is, uh, this is not a new concept. Uh, a lot of tools have been out that sort of done this. I don't know any tools out from a Google hacking perspective that actually work anymore for actually scraping without getting bot detected within a, uh, within a couple minutes with Google. But um, uh, we have one that is distributing through a number of proxies, uh, spoofs user agent, refer header, things like that, sets random user IPs, and goes across different Google servers to effectively give you the ability to, to scrape Google. And now we're no longer limited to 64 results, but you could actually get 1,000 results, which is what your actual limit is in the, through the web interface. Yeah, one of the things we found uh, in the documentation is that for like, the Ajax API, and then even um, on some of their other interfaces, like th this tool actually uses the Google mobile interface, which is just Google slash M, which your iPhone goes to automatically based on its user agent and your Android automatically goes to. It's a slimmed down version of Google. It has no ads or no superfluous links, so it's a lot less going over the wire and it's easier to scrape. Uh, we also, we noticed down in the, in the documentation that they allow you to specify user IP as a query string parameter. So if you're making a widget for people to use and you don't want it to get blocked because it's coming from the same server uh, that's on your site and, and it looks like there's you know, thousands of users hitting Google from that IP address, you can specify a user IP, which is, uh, would be your clients that are coming and hitting your, your page. And then Google's like, okay, well, we see that, how you're using this now. You're just allowing other people to use you as like a, a middle proxy to, to hit us and we'll block you less. Yeah. And uh, so that was one thing that we integrated into this. Yeah, and we got this, you could see the, uh, the actual mobile interface up there. Uh, we originally were gonna use, how many of you guys are familiar with Scroogle? Anyone? It's been in the news a little bit lately. But they uh, leverage a similar interface that uh, we're not actually stripping out advertisements as well, so from a legal standpoint, that might, might help out. That's what I tell myself anyway. Um, finally, as uh, Rob mentioned, the Bing Hacking Database, first ever. Uh, the tools that have existed up until this point have allowed you to maybe uh, enumerate URLs or unique domains, but uh, we actually have uh, a thousand uh, Bing Hack database entries. Um, Bing, one of the reasons that this hasn't happened up until now is that Bing had made some efforts to try to prevent this from happening. Um, and in March of 2007, they actually disabled in URL link and link domain specifically to uh, try to prevent Google hacking type attacks. Um, we found some ways around that. Um, also, limited things like uh, limited file type functionality, only so many, uh, forced us to go ahead and sort through all 1,600 of the Google hack and Foundstone hack database uh, regexes and convert them over, which was fun. And uh, we also are developing what we're calling the SLDB, or the Stack and Lou database, which is a new search term. Since there's really no one actively maintaining Johnny Long's database or, or, and uh, the Bing hacking database is just a conversion of that, we found uh, a lot of uh, queries that are just around on hack hacking forms that we included. Uh, we have interns actively developing them. And uh, it's something that we plan on building out just so that this still maintains relevance. As, as you, and we're also opening it up to contribution. If you think of something or you know something that you personally use and you want to contribute to, to this and share it with the community, 
uh, we'll integrate that into to future releases of, it's, it's just basically a, a flat text file that you can load into our tool uh, to u u utilize these queries. So a number of the tools we'll be releasing, uh, I should also mention all these tools and all the research we're releasing is all for free and all available on our, uh, on our website. at the, uh, the Google Hacking Diggity project. But um, one of the first tools we'll take a look at here is actually Search Diggity, which is the uh, nice uh, GUI interface over Google Diggity and Bing Diggity. Um, again, this tool is going to be for free. Uh, as we can see here, I have some demos, right? <laughs> can do the wolf one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so part of the fun of doing this research was actually just looking at the results that came back. Uh, so one of the, one of the queries in the, in the uh, hacking database in the Google Hacking Database searches for um, OpenX uh, shopping cart, which is an uh, open, open source shopping cart system that's known to have vulnerabilities. And it says powered by uh, open, open shopping cart at the bottom of every page. And one of the things that we noticed uh, was using this uh, was uh, wolfpeople.com. So if you're tired of having clothes that don't have enough wolves on them, I suggest you check this website out, and you may be able to get some clothes for free because they're using vulnerable shopping cart system. Yeah, and we can see here that it matches the uh, regex for powered by X cart, which is what it was looking for. Wolf socks. <laughs> I personally am going to get loads of wolf socks. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, just taking a look at this interface, this may seem familiar if you've ever used any Google hacking tools in the past. Uh, for the most part, but again, this time we're using the Google Ajax API, so you won't get blocked by bot detection. You're not breaking terms of service. Also, unlike uh, the past, we allow you to specify more than one domain. Yeah, most of our clients are uh, Fortune 100 companies, and to, to you know, the previous tools that we saw that were out there were one domain at a time. There's no way that we're going to be able to sit there and click through their thousands of domains to, to mine this type of information using their tools. So that was just a nice little thing. You know, we realized that like, this is something that people need. Uh, yeah. one, one of our clients actually has 700 domains that they have to monitor. So Google hacking one site at a time was, was, a, was a little bit much. Yeah, and so this actually ships with the Google hacking database, the Foundstone hacking database, and the SL database uh, all preloaded. And you can actually make your own files, flat files, and load them in through the file menu. And which uh, you know, we wanted to allow people to be able to do things like that. Also, you can append things to any, uh, all, uh, all of the queries that you search. Uh, or you can, if you just want to use the simple interface, it's just, just like typing into the Google search bar, which I think most people do at this point, just because there's no handy usable tools that are out there. Cool. One other thing is, how many of you guys are familiar with Google Custom Search? Show of hands. Nice. So. Do you guys use it often? Yeah? Like, so like a couple more, just a couple hands use it actually on a regular basis? So it seemed like less than half. Uh, Google Custom Search is going to allow us to create our own custom search engines. That's going to take all of Google results. So you're actually going against uh, Google results and, uh, and then filter it based on a number of filters you provide. So in that case of that client who has 700 domains, we just created a Google Custom Search engine for them that filters all of Google and just those 700. Then they could just check every box click it and go because... You can do it with things like wildcards. You can do like star.example.com. So I want all of those, those domains that are in that wildcard. So another use of this Google custom search engine is that we've started to create uh, custom search engines that filter false positives. So if you've ever done Google hacking before, one of the biggest pains is you know that the results are completely filled with false positives. If you do any of these SQL uh, errors, it might come back with you know, SQL Tutor or whatever, or some forms yeah. describing a problem. It might be a developer posting a question on a forum saying, I have this error page in my website. What does this mean? And like, obviously, that's not a real vulnerability. So uh, yeah, Fran actually developed a, a lot of the Google custom search engines that will say minus forums, minus blogs, minus uh, anything that, that's typically a false positive. So you can just plug in that key and then exclude those from your search results. Yeah. So it's still going to get some support Lexus Nexus. Get that. And another, uh, so basically this, this UI combines the Google Diggity and Bing Diggity uh, into um, one interface. And just by switching to the other tab, you'll see very similar functionality for Bing, where it has the Bing database preloaded and the S